Okay. Sampling distributions. First, the word distribution. Distribution is just a lot of stuff put together. It could be a graph. It could be a table. When you have a lot of information that you put together, that's a distribution. Okay. So if I had a graph of test scores, could be this class, could be another class test scores, that would be a distribution, right? It could be different types of graph. It could be a bar graph, it could be a histogram, it could be a dot plot, it could be a box plot, right? Or I could just have a table. This many people got an A, this many people got a B, this many people got a C, this many people got a D, this many people got an F, right? Either one is, is a distribution, right? So what we're talking about today is a distribution, but for samples, but for samples, okay? So what is sampling distribution? It's the collection of a large number of sample statistics, okay? So if I were to take a lot of samples, a lot of samples of anything, find a statistic. We're going to talk about what a statistic is in a second. Put all of those somewhere in this circle here. All of those would be what we call sampling distribution, okay? So a sampling distribution is a collection of a large number of sample statistics. It could be averages or it could be proportions, right? Means or proportions of a given sample size, okay? So a couple of definitions, parameter and statistic. Parameter and statistic. Parameter. Parameter is a number that describes the population. Describes the population, okay? So if I said the average home in Fresno is worth $200,000, that would be a parameter. $200,000 would be a parameter because that represents the average of all homes in Fresno, right? But if I said I took a sample of 100 homes in Fresno, I took a sample of 100 homes in Fresno, and the average of those 100 is $300,000. $300,000 would not be a parameter because it doesn't talk about the entire population. It only talks about, it only refers to a sample. That's what we would call a statistic, a statistic. So it's statistic is a number that uh, describes the sample. A parameter is a number that describes the population. So it just depends on what you're describing, right? If you guys are a population, remember populations can be big or small. So if I said this class is a population and I said the average test score for this class was 85%, that's a parameter. 85% is a parameter because it talks about the population. But if I said a sample of five students from this class, if I took a sample of five of you guys and your average, the average of just those five was 90%, that would be a statistic because I'm only talking about the, the, the sample, okay? So parameter is population. Statistic is just the sample, okay? Okay, so, um, so the value of a statistic can be computed directly from the sample data. We often use a statistic to estimate an unknown parameter. We're gonna, that's, that last sentence there is kind of what we're going to be doing a lot this semester. Doesn't really make much sense, but that's really what we do. We're going to be using statistics to show the unknown parameter. Okay. When we have presidential elections, every four years we have presidential elections. 2020, we had one. 2024, next year, we're going to have another presidential election. Before the election is even had, before the election, before anyone even casts a vote, statisticians already know what percent each person is going to get pretty closely. This person right here is going to get 40% of the vote. This person right here is going to get 45% of the vote. And you're like, how do they know that before anyone's even cast a ballot? 
how do they know that this guy right here is going to get 45, 40, and this one over here is going to get 45%? How do they know that? Because they know it based off statistic data. They know it based off samples. Their whole job is getting samples. Call people, email people, text people. Who do you think you're going to vote for? Who do you think you're going to vote for? Who do you think you're going to vote for? And they're really good at their job. So they take samples that estimate what's really going to happen. And they do it really well. They do it really, really well. Okay? Anytime there's an election, they can, they can pretty much going in, they know who's the more likely to win and who's not. Because it's always like, oh, this person's likely going to win. This person's probably going to win. All right? How do they know that? No one's even cast a ballot. No one's even voted. Right? How do they know who's going to win? And most of the time they're right. There's a few times they're not right. But most of the time they're right. How do they know that? Because of statistics. Because they take really good samples and they get really good information from those samples. That helps them predict what's actually going to happen. They're essentially predicting the future. Okay? Okay, so... We have parameters and statistics. Remember, parameters come from the population. Statistics come from just from the sample. Okay? So we're going to use some symbols here. So we have some symbols that we're going to be using. Some of them you've recognized. Some of them you might not recognize. Okay, so population. So we'll do the parameter first, the top two boxes. So if I have a mean, an average, that comes from a population, I use the symbol for mean that we've used before. This guy right here. Mu. Right? We've used that symbol before many, many times. Kind of looks like a cursive U with a tail or kind of like an M. Right? So we call it mu. Okay, that's how it's pronounced. Okay. Now let's say I get a average, but not from the population, just from the sample. Well, we don't call it mu. That one we call x bar. We say x bar. That's how it's pronounced, x bar. So you're going to see a lot of symbols. You're going to see a lot of symbols. You've already seen a lot of symbols, but you're going to see even more this, this semester. And judging by the symbol, you will be able to tell if it's a sample or if it's a parameter, if it's a means or if it's a proportion, right? Okay, so proportions. What do we use for proportion? If it comes from the population, we just use the letter P. There's no fancy word for it. It's just P. I shouldn't even put equals, just P, lowercase p. If the proportion comes from a sample, though, I'm not going to use P. I'm actually going to use what's called P hat. A P with a little, like, uh, carrot on top little arrow on top. Okay. Those are the symbols I use depending on what I'm talking about. Am I talking about a proportion or am I talking about a mean? Am I t is it from the parameter or is it from the statistic? Is it from the sample or from the population? So just depending, those are the ones we're going to, those are the ones we're going to use the rest of the year. Okay. You will see all, you'll see all three of those symbols probably almost every day we, we, for the rest of the year. Okay. Okay, so turn it over. Let's do some practice. Okay. So example number one, for each statement, identify whether the numbers underlined, so the stuff that's underlined, right, is a statistic or is a parameter. Okay. So... Letter A, of all U.S. kindergarten teachers, 32% say that knowing the alphabet is an, is an essential skill. Knowing the alphabet is an essential skill. That's a 32% of all kindergarten teachers say that. So 32%. 
So first of all, is 32% reflect, is it a mean or is it a proportion? Is it an average or is it a proportion? It's a proportion, right? It's a proportion. Okay. So which symbol are we going to use? P or P hat? In other words, does 32% come from a sample or does it come from a population? How do we know it's population? There we go. That number refers to all U.S. kindergarten teachers. That's a population. So we would say P equals 0.32. That tells me it's a proportion, and that number is a um, is a parameter. Okay. Of the eight hundred U.S. kindergarten teachers polled, thirty four percent say that knowing the alphabet is an essential skill. So now we have thirty four percent. Is it still a proportion? Or is it an average? It's not an average because because it would say the average said so there's no word in there that says means or average. So it's still a proportion. OK. This says 34 percent. Where does it come from? It only comes from 800 teachers that were asked in the sample. Right. The sample was 800 teachers. It doesn't come from all like it did in A. So 34% is going to be P hat, which is a statistic. Okay. All right. So now what I want you to do is do number two. A, B, C, and D. Number two, A, B, C, and D. So of the U.S. adult population, 36% has an allergy of some, some kind. A sample of 1,200 randomly selected adults resulted in 33.2% reporting an allergy. Okay. Who is the sample? So who is, or sorry, who is the population? Who is the big? There you go. All U.S. Res, all U.S. adults. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It even says the word population right there. All U.S. adults. Okay. Who or what is the sample? 1,200 1, randomly selected U.S. adults. They're still U.S. adults. They're just not all of them. It's the ones they picked, right? How did they pick them? Well, they used one of those, uh, some sort of system like we did in chapter four. That's how they picked them. We did in chapter four, we learned how to make a good um, sample. Okay, so now we're talking numbers here. Identify the statistic, give its value and symbol used. Okay, so the statistic, we said the sample was the 1200. So which number goes with the 1200? Which value goes with the 1200? 33.2, right? Again, it's still 0.332. It's um, still a proportion. It's not an average. So what symbol goes with it? P hat. Okay. And then the other one, which is 36%. Mm -hmm represents the population. Yeah, the proportion of everybody who has an allergy of some sort. Okay. Okay, so do number three now. Do number three. Just two, 
Number three just has an A and a B. So select select 90, or should say a select, bad, bad grammar there. Select 90 students currently enrolled in NCSU and ask how many, oh, so, okay, so, and ask how many years they've attended the university, how old they are, and if they live on campus, okay? So let's start with the sample. The sample's probably the easiest one. Who or what is the sample? There you go. The 90. Anytime it says select, that just goes with the sample because to be a sample, you have to get selected, right? So 90 selected NCSU students. Sometimes it's easier to start with the sample because once you get the piece, who were those 90 pulled from? What population were those 90 pulled from? All. All NCSU students. All current, I should say. I probably should say all currently current and currently enrolled or current. Okay. All right. Okay, so um, before we do it, we're gonna do a little activity here in a second. But before we do that, sampling variability. What is variability? I know what a sample is. You take a sample from a whole, right? What's variability? Close. Not how often it happens. That's frequency. Variability. Variability goes with another word. How different they are, how spread out they are. Differences, spread, variability, right? That's what variability is. So how different are each of the samples? You guys, you guys are gonna take a sample here in a second. How different, and all of your samples will be different. Not everyone will be exactly the same. Some of them might be the same, but most, a lot of them are gonna be different, okay? So sampling variability, why are your guys' different? Why are samples different? Well, it's called sampling variability. The value of a statistic varies in repeat random sampling. Okay, to make sense of sampling variability, we asked why, what would happen if we took many samples? So that's why we take many samples because anything could happen if I take one sample, right? But if I took many, 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 many samples, you start to get a better picture. And that's what we're gonna do right now. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you each of you guys a deck of cards, okay? Each of you guys, I'm gonna give a deck of cards. I want you to uh, take them out, take out, the uh the non-playing cards so like the jacks and the or sorry not the jacks the joker the jokers and the um like the instruction cards all of the cards that you don't play with i just want the 52 we usually play with okay so you're going to take them out we don't need all of those other ones okay and then give them a good shuffle once you take them out once you take out the cards you don't need, give them a good shuffle. If you're not, if you can't do the shuffling the fancy way, just put them upside down and kind of move them around. If you can't do the uh, the fancy shuffling way, it's okay. As long as they're shuffled.
So shuffle them a couple times just so that they're um, nice and shuffled. Because I don't know if they were shuffled before they got put back. Okay, so you should have 52 cards. They're all regular decks. They're not, they're not anything different with them. They're all regular decks, standard decks. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some samples. We're going to take a bunch of samples. Okay? So what I want you to do is, what you're going to do is, you're going to shuffle your deck of cards, which you've done. You're going to flip over the first 10. Without looking, you're going to flip over the first 10. Okay? Record the number of reds you see. Record the number of reds that you see. So just flip over 10. Okay, once all 10 are out, how many, how many reds do you have? It's either going to be between 1 or 10, or 0. You could have 0 reds, 0 to 10. Can't have more than 10 reds, can't have less than 0. Can't have less than zero reds. Change that number into a proportion. What proportion of the of the cards you have in front of you are red? So like I have three red. So my proportion would be 0.3. Okay, 0.3. So I'm going to write 0.3. Which symbol goes with that? With that guy? P hat, good. That's my P hat. Your P hat's going to be different. Or it might be the same. Whatever your P hat is. Okay. Now what I want you to do, once you do that, put the cards back in, shuffle them again. Shuffle them again. Mm -hmm. What's up? No. No. We'll talk about that in a second, yeah. We're going to talk about population and samples. and First, we need the data first. First thing we need to do is the data. So we'll do this twice. So we've done it once already, so you should have one p-hat, and then you're going to get another p-hat. Yep, yeah, same thing. Exactly the same thing you did the first time. Just red. What proportion of the cards in front of you? The first time and second time are red. Okay. So you should have two p-hats from the first time we did it and from the second time we did it. Okay, we're going to graph them all. We're going to graph them all right now using a dot plot. Okay, don't put the cards away. We're not done with the cards. But for right now, let's see what we got. Let's look at our distribution now. What we're doing is we're creating a sample distribution. That's what we're doing right now. We're creating one. Okay. Okay, so I have an X for 0.3, and I have an X for 0.5, because those are mine, okay? 
So what I want you to do is tell me. Just use fingers, one or two. Anybody get a point one? Anybody get a point one? No point ones? Point two, point two, any point twos? One or two. Point three is like me. Anybody get a point three? We got one, two, three, just one? Just one point three? Okay, so one, two, three. So four total, including mine. So this is our class data. Okay. Point fours, so just put it on your finger. One point four or both times you got a point four? Just one or two. Show me a one or a two so I can count fingers. One, two, three, four, four. Okay, so four X's here. Okay, so point five. I got a point five. How many people got a point five? One or two fingers. Two means both times. One just means one time. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Wait, let me count again. I think I saw more fingers go up. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine X's. So we need nine X's. Plus mine, ten total. Okay. Point six, six out of 10 were red. Six out of 10 are red. So one means it only happened one time, two means it happened both times. One, two, three, four, just four. Okay, so four X's on point six. Okay. Point sevens, point seven, point seven, point seven. One, two, three, four, five, five. Okay. Point eights. One, two. Point nine. Does anyone get all ten red? Or none red? Okay. Yeah. Sydney? Okay, so let's let's do it. Let's do point five again. How many people got point five? One finger or two fingers? One finger, two fingers. So I had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Nine total. Okay. So yeah, re erase one of the x's. Okay. Everyone did it twice. So me included, we should have thirty x's. I think. Okay. Mm -hmm. Point two. So let's put one on point two. Okay. That's the sampling distribution. That's a, a sampling distribution. We have 30 samples there. 30 samples. Each one represents a sample. Each one represents a sample of 10. Okay. So my question is, What do you what do you see about the sampling distribution? What do you see? What are things that stand out? Say what? Say it again. Where on where on the picture do you see that? What about point five? And does that make sense? Because point five is the highest because. What is 0.5? So how do I say that? Keep going. Not P hat. My P hat there. P is equal to 0.5. The true, not, that's not within the sample. P, if P equals, P equals something, that has nothing to do with the sample. We know, I already know, I know the answer here. P is going to equal 0.5. Because I know that half of all of the cards are red, half of all the cards are black. Right? It's a standard. I already know that. So that's why P 
hats. Now, is every single x on 0.5? What is that due to? That's due to sampling variability, right? Sampling variability. Doesn't mean you guys did anything wrong. It's just there's always going to be variables, variability with sampling, right? If I flip a coin 10 times, that mean I'm going to get five heads and five tails? No. There's variability there, right? Okay. So what I'm going to do now, let's do it two more times. Let's do it two more times. We're going to keep our data that we have. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to shuffle up and we're going to do 10 and then shuffle up and then do 10. So we're going to add to our, to our picture. Okay. You see what happens. So if you don't remember, if you shuffled, just shuffle again. So we're going to get two more P hats, two more P hats. So essentially we're doubling the distribution. Once you've done that, you can put it back in the in the box. So you should have two p hats from before, two new p hats, which you just came up with. We are done. Now, okay, so same thing, showing fingers, sets of fingers, once for it happened one time from the, from the second, from the new ones, the ones we haven't graphed yet. Two, it happened two times. Okay, so anybody get a zero, like no reds? Did anyone get 0.1 red? 0.2 red? Point three, point three. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, so six more. So we're gonna add six to the point three. Point four, point four. Once, twice, point four. Just one, two. So two, we're gonna add two to the point four. Point five. I already added two for mine. 
So 0.5, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 8. On top of the two that are already there, so there's going to be 10 new ones. Point sixes, point sixes, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so five more. We're going to add five more to the point sixes. Point sevens, point sevens. Go over here. One, two, three, four, five. We're going to add five more. Point eights, point nines, one point nine. Anybody else? Anybody not up here? Okay, so now we have a sample size of 30 times 2, 60. This is a sample size of 60. What do you notice from the first time to the second time? So the first time is just the black. The second time is everything, red and black. Point threes and point sevens. Yeah, there was like six point threes and six five point sevens. So we did have quite a few point threes and point sevens. It seems like everything, it seems like it, yeah, okay. That's like a lot of the same stuff is happening like a second time. 0.5 is exactly the same before, right? We had 10 X's and we have 10 circles, right? 0.7, I think we had one more circle. 0.6, I think we had one more circle. 0.3, we had, I think, one more circle, so, but close though, right? Are we getting a true, is a, is a true answer kind of revealing itself? What the true answer is? So what is the true is the true answer? What I mean by true answer is P. Do all of these P hats tell me what P is going to be more than likely? Probably that guy, right? Or something very close to it, right? I know I can't get 0.45 or 0.55, but something really, really close to it. That's what happens. If I were to do it another 60, and another 60 times, and another 60 times, and another 60 times, and another 60 times. I kept doing and doing and doing it. It would just make, it would just make, it would reinforce what the true answer is. Okay? It would reinforce what the true answer is. This one I chose because you know the true answer. The true answer is 0.5. There's half red and half black, right? Tomorrow we're going to do another one of these, but you're not going to know the true answer. Okay, you're not going to know the true answer. Um, and we'll see if we come close to it based on our on our sample. Okay, so that that's what happens. The more you add to your sampling distribution, the perfect sampling distribution, how many samples should I have? The perfect number is an infinite number. Never stop. Well, obviously, we can't do that. But the bigger the sample, the more it's going to reflect what the actual answer is. Right? The more we do something. Okay, it always reflects what the answer really is. Okay. All right, so let's look at the next page. Okay, so sampling distribution. In the previous activities, we took a handful of different samples of 10 cards. There are many, many possible SRSs of size 10 from a population of 52. In fact, there are 270,725 different things that could happen. If I were to pull out 10 cards, there are 270,725 different things that could happen. It's a lot. That's taking into account the color and what the card is, right? So 
I could do it 270,725 times. I could do exactly what you just did four times, and I could get different combinations. Different combinations. That doesn't mean I would get, I'm talking about like color and actual card. Okay. If we took every one of those possible samples, calculated the sample proportion for each, and graphed all those values, we'd have a sampling distribution. That's kind of what we started here. I didn't do it 270,000 times, I did it 60, but essentially that's what you'd be doing. Okay. If I could do that an infinite number of times, that would be ideal. But again, we can't do it an infinite number of times because that just doesn't exist. Okay. So the sampling distribution of a statistic is the distribution of values taken by the statistic in all possible samples of the same size from the same population. All of these samples came from the same population, right? What is the population then? We talked about the sample is 10 cards. What is the population then? The entire deck, right? All of our decks were the same. They were all the same. So it doesn't matter if it's my deck or your deck, it's a deck of cards, okay? In practice, it's difficult to take all possible values of size n to obtain the actual sampling distribution of a statistic. To do that, we'd have to do it an infinite number of times. Instead, we can use simulation to imitate the process of taking many, many values or many, many samples, okay? The last thing we're talking about, we'll get to the bottom part later, but the last thing, Describing a sampling distribution. There's three things we use to describe a distribution, any type of distribution. Center, tell me about the center. Tell me about the spread or variability. Tell me about the shape, right? Those are the three things. Hopefully those sound familiar. Center, shape, spread, okay? A statistic is called unbiased. It's an unbiased estimator. If the mean of its sampling distribution is equal to the parameter being estimated. In other words, if I was to take and add up all of these 60 values, 0.2 plus 0.3 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 plus 0.4, 0.4, 0.4, add up all those values and divide by 60. If I were to get something very, very close to that, we call it unbiased because it's the true answer. This is the answer it should be. Half of the cards are red, half of the cards are black. So that's what we call an unbiased estimator of the parameter, okay? If it's unbiased, the mean, the center of the sampling distribution will always be equal to whatever the true answer is. In this case, it's 0.5. Okay, the spread is affected by the sample size, not the population size. So the bigger the sample, the smaller the spread. Okay, the larger the sample, the smaller the spread. Okay, let's see. So actually we can finish this because it, it has to do with what we're going to talk about tomorrow. You notice that the sample size, I have a, the top one, the top one reflects a sample size of 100. The bottom one reflects a sample size of 25. What do you notice about the two pictures, the difference? One is what? Is more... One is more spread out. One is more skinny or narrow, right? More skinny, the more narrow, is less variability, right? So if I bigger the sample size, the less the variability. The smaller the sample size, the more the variability. That's just true of anything. The bigger the sample size, sample size affects the variability. It has nothing to do with the center. The center of this guy would be here and the center of this guy would still be here. They're in the same spot, just the variability. Unbiased estimator. Unbiased estimator means the center is in the right spot and all of the bars are around there. Bias estimator means that's where the center is. And all of these bars are nowhere near it. That means I did something wrong. Okay? Bias has to do with the center, not the spread or the variability. 
Okay. And then this just says the bigger my sample is, the closer it gets to this, which we want. Right? Okay. So tomorrow we're going to do another activity, which kind of will bring in all that stuff. Okay? All right.